GeekWire is sad to report that Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen has died from cancer at the age of 65. His death comes just two weeks after announcing that he had been diagnosed with a recurrence of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So instead of the usual show format, we're going to feature highlights from Paul Allen's speech at the 50th anniversary of the University of Washington Computer Science and Engineering School. He delivered the speech in March 2017 after he gave a $40 million gift to the school. This campus has been home to me because not far from here in the university library that my father helped lead, I spent hours in the stacks as a kid devouring piles of books so I could follow the latest advances in science. And I spent a lot of time in the graduate computer science lab as a high school student. Of course, I didn't belong there, but the professors looked the other way until we wore out our welcome, as you can guess high school students would do eventually. <laughs> I still have the letter from the computer lab director, Dr. Helmut Goldie, kicking us out. <laughs> A couple of lines still make me laugh. <laughs> Dear Mr. Allen, it begins. He goes on to list the, the many and several reasons for kicking us out. One was that we would use all the terminals at once for such long periods of time that the lab became too busy and noisy. Two is that some of my co-conspirators hadn't properly checked out equipment. And the third and truly great offense still gets me. Earlier this week, the letter reads, you removed the acoustic coupler from Dr. Hunt's office without authorization. <laughs> it's true, guilty as charged. I bet a lot of you here even those immersed in the study of computer science are wondering what on the earth that mysterious box sitting right there is. It's called the Trafodata machine. Bill Gates and I handled the software side of it, but the machine was built here on campus by a UW student named Paul Gilbert. The idea was simple enough. We wanted to automate the traffic measuring process, part of which required high school students to count the holes punched into paper tape each time a vehicle drove over a black tube laid across the street. We wondered if there was a less expensive solution than a mini computer processing the tapes. And I had read, actually, in the computer science library about a new 8008 chip from Intel and suggested we try to build a machine based on it, which didn't turn out to be easy at all. Objectively speaking, the Trafo Data Enterprise was a failure as a company. Right as our business started to pick up, states began to provide their own traffic counting services to local governments for free. As quickly as it started, our business model evaporated. But while Trafo data was technically a business failure, the understanding of microprocessors that we absorbed was cru crucial to our future success. And the emulator I wrote to program it gave us a huge, lead, a lead, a huge head start over anyone else writing code at that time. If it hadn't been for our Trafodata venture, and if it hadn't been for all that time spent on UW computers, you could definitely argue that Microsoft might not have happened. I hope the lesson here is that there are few true dead ends in technology and entrepreneurship. Sometimes taking a false step in one direction positions you to push ahead in another one and relentlessly absorbing the latest in technology can prepare you for that new path towards success.